All right, we've been building up to it for a while, but I've decided it is now time to actually start mega stating for real. So we're going to do a series Ready. of unifications or federations this turn. So we'll need to set national policy it's in India, available. set national policy in Malaysia. Are uh, we still on countdown here? 12 February. One more countdown until we can set national policy here as well. Uh, we'll want to take control of the Gulf states. We're going to want to move in. Kampala as well, the Great Lakes states, so we're going to need to set policy in the Central African Republic, because as a totalitarian state, it is vulnerable to, uh, shall we say, expedited unification policy. So we will do that. One, two, three, I think that's all I need this turn. Now, I could wait and try and rip Siberia, so Novosibirsk, um, Irkutsk, and uh, Vladivostok, Wow, Vladivostok's a big province. Vladivostok is down here, man. Um, but, you know, these provinces are huge anyway. Uh, we could try and rip the Siberian provinces off the Eurasian Union, but it would require greatly antagonizing Exodus and seizing control of Russia, or wrecking it with unrest. None of them are very academy things to do, so I don't think we can do that. Uh, and I think we need one more unification in the Caliphate. So let's set national policy Lord Caliphate. Uh, oh no. Oh, we have one person free. Well, the one person free can suppress unrest probably in India, because that will still be there next term. And let's roll. Zata Hellion. Yes, okay, fantastic. Now, the one problem I'm going to run into with all of these drives, the Flow Stabilize, Z-Pinch, the Zeta Hellion, the things that I'm unlocking now uh, in 34, is that I have no exotic materials. None. I can't build them. They don't take many exotics, but because Humanity First has been beating the servants so constantly and effectively, um, they haven't started building... They haven't started building alien bases, alien facilities on planet Earth. And as a result, there's no exotics, because normally I get my exotics from assaulting alien facilities. And the servants just aren't at that point yet, because Humanity First has beaten the shit out of them. Uh, so we're going to want the flow-stabilized Z-Pinch fusion reactor as our interim power source. That'll be ready in June, it looks like. Unfortunately, we are doing triple energy now, which is unfortunate. But once Salamander interrogation finishes in a couple of weeks... Uh, we can move on. We've got a whole bunch of weapons uh, that we need to research now, along with power generation. Let's just check that the rivalry is in place. Yes, the rivalry is in place there. Policy direction complete. Okay, Malaysia, unify Indonesia. Okay, so the United Malay Nation is now all of what was once Indonesia, and its capital is still Colombo. Fantastic. So that saves us like a very, very few CP. Why does it always, when you unify, it just defaults things to spoils? And I just, I hate it so much. Because uh, if you don't catch it, you can get yourself in trouble. Uh, what we want is, just before the unification happens, is just its mission control, mission control and a dash of knowledge. Inequality is fine. GDP per capita is fine. Population, nearly 2 billion. Uh, so the United Malay Nation is in good shape. The next step is to federate it with India, which has a claim on Colombo. The reason the capital for Malaysia has not shifted back to Kuala Lumpur is because Kuala Lumpur is owned by the Pan-Asian Combine. Mission complete. Okay, the African Union needs to declare war on the Great Lakes states, call everyone into the war. Fantastic, which means these armies over here, which are primarily at this stage still... Indian forces, but good enough for, definitely, definitely good enough for African operations, um, are more than suitable. Are you not allied with Malaysia? Let's fix that so that we can still use the Malaysian troops, well, what are now the Malaysian troops, formerly the Indonesian troops, uh, to operate there. Let's bring the Caliphate armies to concentrate for when it's time to move into the Gulf states, because they are not democracies and therefore viable to, again, expedited absorption procedures. Mission complete. We are going to unify Kazakhstan into the Caliphate, which again saves us more CP and stops the constant coups in the Caliphate. Now, this now looks like Border Gore, because we have two disconnected territories, but once Israel connects the Egyptian Libyan wing with the Arab like the Arab ring, uh, the Saudi Arabian ring, rather, uh, plus Iraq and whatnot. If we can grab Iran uh, and Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, that'll provide a contiguous caliphate all the way up to Almaty. 
Um, awesome. Okay, so what's next on the agenda? I think we're unifying the Pan-Asians, right? We are unifying the Pan-Asian Combine into India. There we are. So this is now the Pan-Asian Combine turned India. So India includes Japan. Uh, this has a population of 2.4 billion people. It is a full democracy with an 8.1 education standard and moderate inequality. So what we're going to do uh, here, it's generated another CP and instantly it goes to spoils. I don't want spoils. Um, what we want is mostly knowledge, but we also want to start bringing this welfare problem down. Uh, but it's going to be most efficient to build the economy once we combine these two, which will give us a combined population, uh, you know, cresting, cresting four bill. Because the economy is going to generate so, because I'm going to run the economy really hard once they unify, I'm researching clean energy. This will be finished by July, so it should be finished before we unify. Coupled with the fusion technologies, we shouldn't pump too much CO2 into the atmosphere when we decide to suddenly start scaling economy in what is basically Pan-Asia. It's just called India. So, you know. Good job, India. All right, so that's the first stage of unifications. Next run, we're going to, um, next cycle rather, we can unify in Israel and we can federate uh, India and Malaysia, starting the timeline to combining these two states. And once that's done, we're in a great position. But we've just freed up a huge amount of CP cap, which means we can start going a little bit nuts. Africa must be expanding constantly. The caliphate needs to be expanding constantly. And we should consider moving into South America and maybe potentially creating a South American Union once Africa and Asia are now are truly taken care of. Feels good. Feels good. Alright, so this game says it's hard sci-fi, and I can buy the antimatter containment and the fusion reactors, but we just peacefully unified the Caliphate and Israel. Although a little bit worryingly, I've noticed that Israel's nuke hasn't transferred over to the Caliphate. Do I not get the nuke? Alright, so there's just a missing nuke somewhere. Fantastic. Also, the Caliphate has strife level unre uh, 2.3 unrest gained from absorbing Israel. That makes sense. Uh, so we're going to need to bring unrest way down over here. Um, and fix inequality. Democ democracy is the main driver. The people in Israel had a higher democracy value, so they're kind of pissed. They get absorbed into an anocracy, so we're going to need to keep scaling it there. But as we expand the nation, it should have more C uh, more investment points. We are in control now. You can see those investment points, however, just disintegrated because of the unrest level. Ah, oh, there's so much to do, so much to do, so much to do. But we are making progress, and with all these CP free, we can finally expand as we will. India can unify with the United Malay Nation in August of this year, and that will be the big one. That will be the unified state. So finish your mission control while you can, United Malay Nation. 239 is a good base, but we can do better. Uh, build as much of that as you can, because once you're part of India, it's going to be all economy, welfare, and knowledge. It's going to be utopia building time for, you know, the, the better part of more than 4 billion people. Fascinating. And now the pace of expansion is pretty much breakneck. We're going to throw the initiative out of Eritrea. We did have control of Chad. The resistance took over the point, but that's okay. The Indian and African Union military is still rolling in regardless. Uh, the what is now I think a 0, 0.0 Iran yes it's under humanity first control yes I'll have to bribe them but this is a critical expansion to the caliphate um, so as soon as that coup goes off I think we're going into Iran absorbing Iran will damage the democracy and other values um, of the caliphate absorbing it slowly would assist with its military technology but we don't need these armies and I don't want to be contaminated by its democracy value although I do need to check whether or not this does does equalize at all when you unify. Maybe it doesn't. I might want to check that out. In any case, expanding into Iran with the Caliphate, uh, grabbing Chad and Eritrea with the African Union, and just then probably going to move south with the African Union, move northeast with the Caliphate. Uh, India is working on uh, getting Bangladesh sorted out at the moment in terms of bringing that one in. And then I think for India, it's just Himalayan states, although taking that off the resistance seems petty. At the same time, pretty borders. Like, I'm sure that uh, Miss Ayoade will understand the importance of pretty borders. Um, the Caliphate, I believe, can get Afghanistan, uh, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan, so we should have no 
no states between these two borders. We should be able to draw a nice, pretty India here, Caliphate here, African Union down here, and then eventually the Caliphate and African Union can also federate. The reason we need the African Union is because uh, the Caliphate doesn't get claims all the way down here in deep South Africa. African Union does, so if we can unify the two, we should be in good shape. In fact, if anything, I should drop the Federation sooner rather than later, start the countdown, so that when it becomes time to unify the two states, we're in a position to do so. That will also mean that the African Union can afford, since I believe it will get the Caliphate's democracy value primarily, it can focus a little bit on solving its welfare problem in the interim, which would also be handy. In any case, the expansion continues. And that's what we're going to need in order to not destroy the world with global warming when we sent, turn on the economic engine that is going to be United Asia and United Africa plus plus plus. Um, so clean energy is done, that's fantastic. We could go antimatter containment, that may be a good way to go. Um, I don't think we need anything else super urgently. White collar automation is handy. Administrative algorithms is handy. Uh, but let's go antimatter containment, start that happening. And I also want in-situ uh, resource as well. So we can probably like lay off the global research a little bit and put more priority into these projects simply because at this point, we've got a lot of the critical global stuff done it's worth at this point starting to actually capitalize and make that stuff operational. So our research is going absolutely insane right now. Uh, we're going to move into the Himalayan really states. Our positioning for Iran is getting better. I just don't want to cause an international incident. Do we want mission to sat? We want in situ resource utilization. I think at this point, mine machine, antimatter containment, heavy green phaser. We're about to do a permanent peace as well, which I feel like is an interesting sort of parallel to the fact that we're bringing something closer to a permanent peace on Earth. Someone's sabotaging my space facilities. That's pretty bad. Inertial confinement, terror fusion one. That's getting us closer to the deadless, which we will eventually want. All right, Nigeria, come on, associates are now in charge. Himalayan 1, Our clear, and Nigeria, gone. great, so we have control of Nigeria, which means bringing it into the African Union should be a done deal, uh, Niger is coming under control now, let me just check the unifier date on Malaysia, United Malay Na Nation, 28 August, so another cycle, and then the United Malay Nation should be able to be brought into the fold, useful since we are now going over the CP cap, and I am ready to light the fire on some economic growth, which requires us gluing these two together first. So for your last, I don't want space defences, why am I building space defences? I don't want space defences, I'm going to rely on fleet-based defences of planet Earth. So your last gasp of mission control production, make it so, uh, and then once you're joined together, it'll be all economy all the way. But if we can hit a decent number of mission control before we do, that'd be great. I will need to send some peace envoys out though, because people are starting to bomb my stations. So let's go talk to, let's go talk to the protectorate and go from there. I'd like to talk to someone from Resistance and Humanity First just to smooth things over and also just to give them a leg up because Humanity First, uh, for everything, is really making the game easier for me by bashing the crap out of the servants and I kind of appreciate it. And here we go, what I believe is the most expensive technology I've ever seen in the game because it cost 100,000 points a permanent piece. Any realistic chance of talking the Hydra down and ending this war through neither violence nor subjugation required breakthroughs on multiple fronts. The first was designing a weapon that could frighten even them. On this we have succeeded, at least in theory. I presume that's the humanity first bioweapon. The second was convincing our still wary captive to convince his kin that their current path leads only to mutually assured destruction. Our intentions remain peaceable, but in order to achieve that, we have had to comport ourselves with a certain aggression. All right. Allows us to tra I don't want to transfer territory to the alien nation. Our work has spun off a new organization, Mission to the Hydra, which is in our faction pool and may be assigned to a counselor. 
Our linguistics team has not been idle, and while we've been pursuing other goals, they have developed a rudimentary mechanism for reading and reproducing ferrocytes, allowing for more sophisticated communication. Using this, we approached Rudy with details of our plans. Security Officer Palmer, given his apparent level of rapport with the Hydra captive, was chosen to present our case. Rudy's first reaction was, as expected, to refuse. We presented him with our blueprint for a bioweapon using modified Hydra cells. The weapon would take advantage of the behavioural effects of Hydra ferrocytes to accelerate its spread, leading to an estimated 99% fatality rate upon infection. I don't think we ever saw that number with humanity first. The instinct to cluster might be must be very, very strong. Like it must be capable of overcoming the ability to like not let people into your station or whatever. Or drive the other people to really try and get in. Anyway. According to our projections, it would at the very least inflict significant population damage and would at most wipe out the race entirely. Our presentation is at least partly a bluff. We lack the biowarfare expertise to actually produce such a virus. Okay, so you don't have the people that Humanity First does that can actually build the thing. You only have the blueprints. Still, while we could not manufacture such a weapon, other humans could, and to Hydras that is much the same thing. For the first time, oh, so, you know, we, we can hold off humanity first for a while, Rudy, but, you know, if you know if, it, if we're not given good reason, maybe we don't pay attention one day and humanity first and this bloke called Max finds his way to the wormhole. Anyway, okay, so we imply a threat and say we can help. For the first time, Rudy demonstrated signs of genuine fear when we presented our offer to him that he act as our go-between in opening negotiations. He agreed with little argument. We have our strategy, we have the knowledge of where we must go, and we have a Hydra who is, however shakily, recruited to our cause. We are as ready as we will ever be. Our plan is reasonably simple, though highly dangerous. We've assembled an envoy team. It consists of Rudy... Security Officer Parker, uh, the head of our translation team, two diplomats and one other security officer, all humans have been injected with a double dose of antiferrocyte serum. According to our calculations, they should be able to pass through the wormhole without exceeding its mass limit. Our fleet must secure the space around the Hydra base. Marine forces will occupy the base, take control of the wormhole apparatus. We will announce to the Hydra garrison that we only wish to negotiate and will offer assurances that no Hydras on the base will be harmed if they let us pass. We do not expect this offer to be accepted. Okay, I like... the the... Um, Academy has become less naive as time goes on. So our envoy team will pass through the wormhole. Once the worm on the wormhole's the other side, our envoy team will attempt to make contact with the Hydra leadership. Rudy's presence will be crucial here. According to Rudy, internal violence among Hydra is rare, and Hydras on the other side will probably attempt to communicate with him rather than shooting first. Probably. Our envoy team will attempt to broker a truce. The envoy team will be entirely out of contact once they have passed through the wormhole. Our only recourse will be to wait and see. Should Oh, now this is interesting. Okay, should the Hydra reject our offer of negotiations once again, we have one final recourse. The second security officer accompanying the envoy team will be carrying a specially designed case containing an antimatter bomb with an estimated yield of 750 kilotons TNT equivalent. All of the human members of the Envoy team have been briefed on how to operate the device. They understand what they are committing to. I'm hoping there's a dead man switch system here in case they shoot you all. But one way or another, no further invaders will be coming through the wormhole. In other words, we're going to turn up on a base with Rudy and say, hey, we want to talk. And if they say no, we're going to detonate an antimatter nuke at the wormhole gate on the other side, shutting down the wormhole. You know... I like this. I like the evolution of the Academy. They start with very high ideals, and they retain those high ideals. The idea that there is a lasting peace is the goal to aspire to, but once they encounter the fact that the Hydra are very hard-edged and very determined, they get tougher as time goes on. The people who are taking a 750 kiloton briefcase nuke through a wormhole to a negotiation you know, walk softly, carry a big stick, are not the same people who approach a mind control security detail and ask them to surrender, which we saw, you know, only a few years previous. Okay, to launch the counselor and win the game, we must fulfill the following goals. Our faction must control 75% of the Earth's population. Oh, well, we currently control 67%, so that's solid. Combined fleet power of all enemy factions must be no more than 25% of the total fleet power among all factions in the solar system. Okay, so that's basically the humanity first goal. We're going to need to walk softly, carry a big stick, which means building a big fleet and destroying most of the Hydra fleet. That kind of makes sense because, you know, our bioweapon is no threat to them if we can't get it to the wormhole and whatnot, and they have a chance of victory as long as their fleet's intact. Our faction's control point values must be at least 75% of all control point values on Earth. 
and we've got 29 percent so that's a problem that's a problem because I think I don't think that's possible without gaining CP values in Europe and North America because we can we can expand to South America we can unify Africa But the CP values of Europe and North America are huge. I'm not sure how to do that. I mean, one way to do it would be uh, massively build up, like tremendously build up the economy of the Pan-Asian and African super states. And then right when you're about to launch the mission into the wormhole, you could release all of the nations driving up the CP point like cost way above your limit maybe but I, I don't know I don't know if that'll work for sure I don't know how to do that without going into North America and Europe maybe if we build the economy up in Africa and Asia enough we can get closer but that's that's gonna be hard all right well I guess we know what our goal is um, we'll build our super states we'll expand into South America we'll unite South America We'll scale up the economy as much as we can, but I'm not sure how to complete that objective without being able to touch Europe and North America. Anyway, uh, that, that one's open in the comments. Anyone who's got any ideas or thoughts on how I should approach that particular challenge, very happy to hear your thoughts. In any case, while I'm thinking about how on earth to do that, let's pull the trigger on this. India and the United Malay Nation unify. Okay, we've got a country here, Makassar, which has broken off. Now that can happen if the cohesion of the United Nation is not quite enough. That's really annoying from a map painting perspective. Really annoying. Because while the Caliphate can come clean that up, it does mean there's always going to be a little block of black in the middle of the Pacific. And I'm not going to roll back the save in order to annoy it. But here we are. This is India. Uh, and it's temporary. This little, this little republic, which we'll get, uh, we'll swallow it up with the Caliphate. And then we're just going to have to deal with a little block of black here, unless I can think of a nice way to even it up later on. Unfortunately, none of the nations that it could be transferred to exist anymore, because this is just India. So India is a full democracy of 4.6 billion people with an advanced education standard, a low level of inequality, a GDP per capita of 14.3. Now it's got basically no investment points temporarily. It will click over. Um, Policy direction complete. Let's also, with the caliphate, and we won't federate the caliphate yet. I'm not sure what I was doing with the caliphate there, but let's close that out. Um, and we'll add the Himalayan states, which is worth another 40 million people. In any case, um, we'll, this uh, mission control point is about to instantly finish. There it is. So there's 201 mission control points in Mega India. And now what we're going to do, since we have clean energy unlocked, is we're basically just going to go economy, 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 welfare, welfare, knowledge. And we're going to go uh, double knowledge and a little bit of unity. Turn off mission control. 67% economy, 17% welfare, 11, uh, we're actually going to go lower, 75, 8, 11, 6, no, 67, 17, 11, 6 seems fine to me, let's push, so this pushes GDP per capita by $26 every time it completes, so do the math on that, we will need to bring unrest down, that's critical, but we've reduced our CP cap to 432 on 546, so there's a lot of room to re-expand. I'm just really annoyed about this. Um, I will go absorb it into the Caliphate, as I said, but um, from a map painting perspective, all of this being orange would have been much, much nicer. But alas, a little block of black, uh, and I'll figure out how to solve it later, if indeed it bothers people, because I don't think I can unite the Caliphate and India in any given way, but that's okay. Let's send the economy there to the moon. Now, a lot of things have suddenly happened at once that have sort of snuck up on me. The first thing is some assault carriers have touched down. I will show you that in a moment. The other thing is there's a dreadnought that's decided to pick a fight with Shakespeare Station. This station only has two layered defense arrays, so we'll see how it fares against the dreadnought Swift Retribution. I don't have, critically, phaser uh, point defense yet, I don't think. 
So I'm not sure two layered arrays are going to be enough to fend off the various weapon systems the Dreadnought's going to throw at them. Looks like we're keeping up with the magnetic rounds, but I think the missiles are going to be way too much. There goes our plasma. We do have plasma weapons on board the station. Not sure much how, how much those will actually hurt the thing, considering they're only mediums. We should also have phaser arrays as well as point defense. Come on. So it would be really, really handy if this wins and we end up with some exotic materials, because I desperately need some. Especially if I end up nuking an alien force on Earth, because one of them has landed outside the range of our armies. Okay, that's the missiles fight. I think we're good. I think we should be able to kill the thing now. Without its missiles, I think it's pretty much a sitting duck. We'll be able to wear it down using our uh, plasma eventually, and if it gets too close, in order to try and get its magnetic uh, weapon through our PD, then the phases are just going to become more effective as it comes closer. At this distance, its armor really won't matter. I think its engines... I think it's drifting. It's lost engine control. It's drifting. Yeah, it's dead. It's done. Alright, well performed by our layered defences. This is why I've been rushing the batteries. I think they've got advanced plasma batteries. Um, I'll check if they've got phaser point defences. They should have UV phaser batteries though, which should help. Alright, does that end the battle? Third, okay, great. Okay, that solved our exotics problem. That's actually solved our exotics problem. Fantastic. Now, let me talk to you about assault carriers. So we got two. The first one's easy to deal with. Uh, it's over here in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan will accept an alliance with the Caliphate. The Caliphate's armies will make it there on time. So that one, easy to deal with. The second one is in Brazil. Now, India's armies are on the way but they won't arrive in time. So the question is, is the AI smart enough to put its army over here, the first division, and move it to the landing site? I'm not so sure. Worst case scenario, I might be able to get a mission off in order to seize control of one of the points in Brazil in time to move a division over there just to prompt the 50% issue, but I'm not so sure. So this is going to be a little bit haphazard. We'll see how it goes. But two assault carriers at once, I think we, with this one we can definitely handle. This one's a little bit more of a question mark. All right, I've come back after a little bit of a break because I think life is about to get complicated. Obviously, we have this assault carrier landing in Brazil. We won't get there in time, which means they're going to disembark and they will get a 100% strength. The Brazilian armies will move to engage and we are allied with them and the Indian armies are on their way. That's great, but engaging 100% strength alien armies with... Well, this sort of tech level just isn't going to fly, so it might be time to hit the big red button for the first time in our history. I think the Caliphate armies are going to be able to deal with this just fine. The other thing that I'm concerned about um, is because of the recent patch, one of the things they said was that there have been changes to alien aggression, and I've just noticed what looks like bombardment corvettes heading for Mercury and Mars. This makes me a little bit nervous because to my mind, and also seeing the hate bar up here, because to my mind, I should be under the hate cap. I shouldn't have done anything to cause it. I don't know whether it's a combination of the patch and completing my victory objective. Like maybe this has caused the aliens to freak out. I don't know. But either way, it looks like I might be under attack soon, no matter how low I lie. I'm rushing some battleships into production as a result. The Thesis class isn't particularly amazing, but all five of my space works are pumping them out. That's because they can be done in 78 days. I could design something much better, a, a Dreadnought or something with better weapons, but I don't have better weapons right now. And the Thesis class is designed to be low exotics cost because I don't really have much in the bank. If nothing else, I need it to power their reactors and their engines. I can't afford to be spending a heap on their weapon systems. So they're very basic plasma plus PD 
battleships with Z-pinch reactors and Zeta-Helion drives. They should at least be able to do some reactive defense around Earth and Mars. They won't be able to take on motherships or anything like that, but I'm hoping the layered defense arrays of my stations will be able to handle the mothership if it comes alone, which currently Victor 74 is. Um, that will mean moving as fast as possible to neutralize any alien fleets in orbit, but still that's 78 days off. So, that's the state of play. Armies beating the assault carriers, but then I think we're going to have to go live in space pretty damn soon. I'm researching a couple of useful uh, weapons, heavy UV phaser batteries for um, to give battle stations better weapons. I'm currently doing counterinsurgency operations. That finishes in five days, and then it's going to be all weapons all the time until we have a full gamut of options for all these ships that we might be building. Um, I would like to be expanding my territory, but honestly, right now, the aliens are going to have to take a priority, uh, even if that means waiting to move in on something like the Himalayan states. I do, I guess, have all these armies without navies. The ones on Japan are completely useless. They're going to have to be uh, disbanded because without navies, uh, they can't leave Japan, and I don't want to build them navies. So I might start moving the 79th Group Army very slowly down here, maybe deal with the Himalayan states, but for the most part, everything with a navy is currently deploying to Brazil. And now I am paying the price for my hubris. There is exactly one base, I believe, on Mercury where I hadn't finished the defences. These were going to finish in January and one was going to finish in on the 3rd of December. So I think I'm about to lose a base because I didn't build defences on it in time, which is a bloody bad mistake to make. Let me just check that for Mars. Yeah, all my Martian bases aren't going to finish defences until the 20th of December. I'm rushing out point defence arrays at the very least for the Tech 1 bases, uh, knocking down my marine labs, uh, my marine barracks rather, which is lowering my ops income, but I've got a good buffer of about 1,000, and I can build a marine base or two later on in order to pump population. But for the moment, it's about rushing defences. I don't have ships or anything like that, so I'm really worried that I'm about to lose a number of mining stations. Not noticing that this had changed with the patch, not noticing the surge of ingression, not noticing that, I don't know if it was the objective technology, it may have been, has indeed caught me off guard, but you know, I like when the game is able to surprise me, and the game should update during early access, they should be able to counter strategies like the ones that I develop, so I'm actually kind of happy in a way that this is happening. The aliens sending small fleets in order to bombard vulnerable stations, from a tactical perspective to me, that makes perfect sense. And that base is unfortunately gone. 79th Group Army is redeploying, so we'll keep sending that down towards Nepal and Co. They are eventually going to patch it as part of the update cycle where you can just set a final destination and it will chain move, but they're not quite there yet. Not a high priority feature, but it will be a nice quality of life change. How are our armies going in relation to Brazil? We'll be making landfall shortly, but again, I'm pretty sure it won't be in time. Now at Mars, I think the aliens might have made a mistake. They've just said they're going to bombard our base at Arcadia Planitia. But this one's got two layered defense arrays using large surface-to-orbit surface ultraviolet phaser cannons, which is the most powerful a layered defense array can be. I kind of think the ship's just going to explode, to be honest. Looks like it's orbiting. That's not a problem. I'd love some animations for... um orbital defences, but I understand why that's not exactly a priority. Looks like the base took some damage. And Vic... Oh, well, yeah, Victor 79 got messed up. Fantastic. Uh, it looks like it's pretty dead in the water. It doesn't still seem to be bombarding. What did they destroy? These are heavy fusion reactor farms that are coming online shortly. That's an agriculture complex. I don't know what it is that they destroyed. That's a marine platoon barracks for defense. What do I want to put here in return? At the moment, the base is a little bit negative on water and volatile, so we'll do that. I think two layered defense arrays should be enough to defend. Three heavy fusion reactors coming online in December. That's more than enough for me. All right, so we're lucky that that bombardment ship didn't pick the wrong target. 
Do I want to swap heavy UV phases for heavy plasma? I do, because that's what I'm going to stick. This advanced heavy plasma battery is what I want to put on a lot of my battleships, so let's get that in research as well. Now, back to planet Earth. I double-clicked right as it was assignment time. Okay, so our armies are about to land on the... So they're landing today. Which means the aliens are going to disembark before then. Because I remember doing the math and we weren't going to get there in time. So let's... I'll do the usual assignments. I shouldn't be double advising Africa. Uh, what I need to do is set national policy on uh, India Time's twice in order to get rid of some of the excess Ready armies. For Ready for my mission. Time Done. To make our move. Reporting in. All right, I think I'm in okay position. I'm advising, the key is to advise India, and then I need to advise the Caliphate. Actually, no, I should put my best, I should put my I best advise on India, and my slightly not quite as good advise on the Caliphate, because I think the Caliphate battle is going to be relatively easy by comparison. They should be arriving in Azerbaijan in just a moment, so they will be there when the aliens disembark. All is well. Wish me luck. All right, the aliens have disembarked in Brasilia. Now, the key here is they have to be destroyed quickly. If they're not resisted, they'll found the alien nation in this province. They'll start creating human armies and, importantly, destroying that administration, declaring war on that administration, will then cause an immense amount of alien hate. I don't want that. I just want to destroy the alien armies. Four Indian armies here, one Brazilian army here. This is not nearly enough firepower to deal with three Zulu-type threats, even with four reinforcement armies coming in. These things are just too powerful. So, unfortunately, for the first time in this game, in fact, for the first time in the release version of the game, I'm going to hit this button. I'm going to pick this province. The target is Zulu 10 through 12. And this is an instruction from the National Command Authority. The release of nuclear weapons has been authorised. Because we are targeting an allied region, we will not do nearly as much damage to the population, infrastructure and economy as we otherwise would. It will be assumed we target military targets only, but this will still hurt. Brazil, 11.814. Nuclear launch underway. While the attack is limited to enemy targets in that region, it still caused significant damage to the local economy and civilian population. All right, scratch an army. We knocked, we knocked 365 GDP per capita off Brazil's output, and reduced the enemy to two 75% strength armies. Our armies are now going in. We should be in a much better position, especially if we get reinforcements in there in time. Humanity first, stop bombing my stuff seriously. And then we should also be engaging in. Uh, uh, yeah, we're doing great here. And also this territory, Baku, is mountainous. It's rugged terrain. So the aliens are in a really bad Mission way up complete. here. Uh, let's disband the army called Disband. And there'll be another army called Disband as well. So that should have gotten rid of both the army. Yep, they got rid of both the armies in Japan, and it should give more investment points to India. We'll never use the armies anyway. We produce these heavy fusion reactors, so let's just quickly... Yep, happy. Plenty of power here now. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, I can come back and upgrade this base a little bit more later, but for the moment we are busy fighting on Earth. That looks like reinforcements are arriving. Antimatter spiker, amazing. We're going to want antimatter spikers on everything, but we need antimatter production to make it happen. Layered defense coming up. But I'm mostly worried about this ground battle. That'll be the victory in Baku, that's fine. <sighs> okay. All right. We committed an atrocity despite not actually setting foot in their territory. That's okay. The engagement is going ahead. We will set foot in their territory, but if I'd hurried up 
to liberate this totalitarian mess into our full democracy of India. Uh, we could have avoided that, but all of our armies are off saving the Earth from aliens, which I would have thought was a reasonably high priority. Uh, Rhea, let me give everyone instructions quickly, and then we'll continue the battle. Okay, uh, Azerbaijan, that front is fine. There's some armies that are taking significant damage in Brazil. Making things safe for our people. Lending my expertise. Hunkering down. All right, there we are. Okay, so we now have nine armies. That's a lot of firepower. We should be able to win with that sort of engagement. I just now have to watch the health levels in my armies to make sure people don't... I don't lose any naval-equipped armies. Looks like the USA has thrown the Protectorate out of England. Uh, the European Union controls Scotland and Northern Ireland, so England is just, well, England and Wales, and it's now under the control of Humanity First and their big beat stick, the United States. It would be nice if they were helping us with this, but I think we're going to be able to handle Zulu 11 and 12 ourselves, thanks to the benefit of that nuclear strike. So we now unfortunately have some atrocities next to our name. Ah, oh, great, more bombardment ships in Mars orbit, that's fantastic. But, job done. I am aware that we basically allied with the Protectorate in order to prevent the aliens establishing themselves there. And the Protectorate is still going to want to surrender after that, but you know what? Um, it is what it is, we can't, we can't change things, the Protectorate are the sort of people they are. All we can do is throw them out of their remaining locations in Africa and absorb them into the African Union. So we'll get these armies to the coast and then get, that, get them uh, redeployed to continue African Union expansion. The armies of the Caliphate, meanwhile, they're going to be needed to do the same, but for the Caliphate. Um, a good objective, and I'm not sure if it counts or not, Turkey. Uh, Turkey has this little bit over here. So very easy to argue that Turkey is... Um, counts as breaching Africa, Asia only, because you're moving into Europe. I would think expanding the Caliphate to take over Turkey and remove the servant's nuclear weapon is probably legitimate, uh, but if you don't want me to do that, do tell me in the comments. I would like to think that expanding the Caliphate out to its maximum extent is probably entirely legitimate. All right, so the armies are all moving, aliens are repelled. I think we're getting pretty close to being able to close this out. And we've got point defense arrays coming up on Mars, so at least the small bases are able to slightly defend themselves. All right, that looks like another base being bombardment. That's the Olympus Mons base. Let's check our defenses. All right, this base has two layered defense arrays. That coup sound is really loud. All right, we lost a building. By now, we should probably have neutralized the threat. So that's producing 197. Okay, so this is all looking pretty good. I think what we want to do in terms of long-term efficiency is probably start by popping a heavy fusion here, and in 365 days, that'll free up a whole bunch of real estate. But for the moment, that's probably okay. And it looks like the Victor that was bombarding that one has been blapped by the layered defences. Top level layered defence arrays, at least on the surface, Mwah, love them. Uh, those ultraviolet phases, I don't need battle stations unless it's a big bombarding fleet, individual ships, two layered defence arrays with ultraviolet phases. It's blap, 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 splash, 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 and I am happy with it. Unfortunately, I don't get any exotics for shooting them down. That's restricted to space shoot downs only. If I have any spare time, by the way, I'd love to crack down these servant points and let humanity first take them. But, you know, I'm kind of got my hands full with my current expansion plans. Uh, ships are now 42 days from construction, and then we can start clearing orbit and fighting back. I don't feel I'm quite ready. I'm going a little bit early. I'm not using the technology that I wanted to use, and it's only 2034, but you know what? If the aliens are bombarding us and picking a fight and hate is not going down despite the fact they're destroying our bases, well then I probably have to fight back whether I want to or not. And if you wonder where I get all my cash from, it's from trades like this one. Uh, thank you, Miss Ayoade. I won't take any of your space resources from you because I really just want your cash. Have Z-Pinch Fusion Reactor 2. It might be useful to you in some way. I have a lot of things that I can trade them. Uh, but I won't give them to them yet, because there's going to be other resources I want later. 
uh, let's just permanent assign for the moment. India should always have an advisor. It's just too valuable to be otherwise. And I think I'm going to wind this episode up as soon as, as soon as we get to the point, I can ally with Nigeria, um, as soon as our ships launch, because that's the point where we're going to want a building frenzy. Once our warships launch, we're catapulting past the hate threshold. We're committing to shooting and engaging. That's the point where I'm going to want to pop a whole bunch of additional orbitals, um, particularly around Mercury, Earth, Mars, those critical locations. I'm going to want to start upgrading everything that's a Tier 1 base to a Tier 3 base. I'm going to want to throw up stations that are going to become command centers, stations that are going to become money generators. I want to be able to upgrade mines to level 3 on Mars as soon as possible in order to massively increase our overarching production. I want uh, enough command centers to catapult this. 259 is respectable, but I would rather 350, 400. And if I have to produce maybe two or three mission control stations around Mercury, it's expensive, but it will help. Now, other places that I can take over on Earth might help a little bit as well. Uh, Turkey, for example, has 14 mission control points. That's really valuable, and as a result, unless I'm told otherwise, I am thinking of moving into Turkey and folding it into the Caliphate, uh, peacefully absorbing it to get some of this good, good miltech. It's got good GDP per capita. It's got 5.7 boost, which we can eventually turn into money stations once we um, once we break the hate threshold. We're going to produce. A, you know, a veteran, a veteran's hospital station in Earth orbit, that's perfectly fine. Like, the things we can do are massive once we agree to break past the threshold, and Turkey would be a good example of a country for it. Um, some of these other countries, yes, they're under the control of the resistance, but they'd be handy. Um, Armenia here has three mission control. Afghanistan has nothing, that's unfortunate. But Turkmenistan has six. Uzbekistan, six. Like there's 12 mission control here, there's 12 in Turkey, and we're going to we're going to ramp up mission control incredibly quickly. It's the most valuable resource right now. So as much of it as I can get, the better. I don't think the resistance is using all of their MC at the moment. Actually, no, they're horribly over. Scratch that. So this will slow them down a little bit. But I might be able to repay the favor. If I build a big MC station generating net net 30 MC around Mercury and give it to them, that might be a solution to that problem. I could prop up their space economy while also having the ground-based MC that I need in order to operate. It's not like, as you saw before, they don't have a whole bunch of cash. All right, so we'll move forward to the point where the ships launch, and then we'll probably call it an episode. You got nukes and a pan-Asian superstate after all. What more do you want from me? All right, so we've just launched our first three Thesis-class battleships around Earth. Uh, these battleships, their space superiority designs, um, they don't have antimatter spikers, but they do have Zeta Helion drives. 64 at armor, 4 side armor, 5 rear armor, so that's 2.2 uh, meters of forward adamantane plating, two 240-centimeter green phaser cannons in the nose, and two point defense phaser turrets. This is because, so the green rather than ultraviolet is because I don't have the exotics to pay for UV phasers. The multiple nose phasers plus point defense is because with the changes to the game, missiles are now a lot more dangerous because they fire in a constant stream and it's much easier for them to overwhelm point defense. So I'm leaning towards putting more lasers and more PD on vessels. Two nose-mounted uh, green phasers for this stage of the game might help. The primary killing power if you can call it that, is two Mark III plasma batteries. These have a range of 800 meters. It's very hard for them to miss. They're not particularly damaging compared to coil guns, but we don't have any coil guns, and we don't have heavy plasma battery Mark III's researched, so this is what we're going with. What we are going to do is start cleaning up some of the alien forces around Earth, and then as soon as we finish uh, advanced heavy plasma in nine days is put a second round of these into production. There is a mothership hanging around Earth that is dangerous, but if we have a look at the fleets here for a moment, uh, we've got Victor 23, which is a destroyer, which we should eliminate, Victor 68, which is a damaged corvette, which we should eliminate, and Victor 65, which is a corvette, which we should eliminate. Is the mothership on its way back to refuel? 
Yep, it looks like the short-range mothership is burning back to Fortuna. It will get there on the 18th of June, so we have a little bit of time. So, Defense Force Earth, the concept, the idea, and the thesis should intercept, I think, Victor 23. Let's shoot down Victor 23, and that'll be a good way to end the episode. Or if we don't shoot down Victor 23, uh, somewhat embarrassing. I won't worry about the Mercury fleet right now. They don't have an immediate engagement, so let's instead deal with something closer to home. All right, Faithful Wanderer, Stone Fortress, Concept, Idea, Thesis, Let Us Go, Short Wall, Archers, Centered. We will engage. Both fleets are willing to fight. For some reason, we will start the battle. Okay, now this one we don't have to worry about too much, I don't think. So we'll do a classic side pass followed by reorient towards the enemy. Like that. And we should be okay. I won't pull the radiators in immediately because I'm pretty sure they don't have any lasers. Now, if we had the heavy plasmas, we'd probably already be engaging, but we don't. But we can make do with two of the medium ones. I think it gives us a slightly higher DPS at the expense of both range and the ability to deal with armor, but I'm not entirely sure about that. I haven't used much plasma except for in the very late game of my Humanity First playthrough, so this will be a first. Looks like the enemy is engaging. We will priority target the Faithful Wanderer. Something like that. Alright, plasma is now firing. Hopefully the battleships are close enough to mutually support. Looks like they are. Green phaser arrays from the nose are engaging the missiles. Plasma has destroyed the first target. I think the Corvette, uh, I think the reason they accepted this engagement is because the Corvette doesn't actually have any ability to maneuver, which is why it's probably just sort of drifting there. So let's go engage and destroy that. Then we can wipe out any other ships that are in Earth orbit and start producing more battleships. We'll need more shipyards, obviously, but for the moment, a small local defense fleet will do. What we need, though, is ships that can go to Mars and defend it. At the moment, Mars don't, doesn't have a local defense fleet. I might be able to attach maybe one battleship immediately. It shouldn't take too long to make the burn, and that might be quicker than building a shipyard there. Plasma away target destroyed. Those green phases, they don't really have much range and reach, but they should be suitable for engaging missiles at the very least at a reasonable range, uh, and magnetic projectiles. I'd rather ultraviolets, but again, like I said, I don't have the exotics. That should be job done. Good kills for the academy, 4.3 exotics in the bank. I desperately need exotics because I want to roll out better technology. All right, that's Defense Fleet Earth engagement successful. It is just Victor 65 that remains to engage, and we will engage them next episode. I hope you have enjoyed. We founded basically the Pan-Asian India Superstate. Just that bit's going to go into the Caliphate next episode. We've already got the GDP up to $89 billion with a GDP per capita of 19000 uh, civilian fusion reactors are finishing soon, which means this will be less of a global warming problem. Um, eventually, once we get to, I want to push the economy to maybe 35k per person, roughly, and then once we get to 35, 40, and we stop getting linearly scaling science and reduced unrest, then we can start pumping knowledge. That will solve the cohesion problem because the rest cohesion is zero because it's such a big state. Knowledge will push this back towards five while also increasing research output. But for the moment, I want to do the economy first because that, you know, keeps people happy. Uh, the caliphate will need to expand into uh, Turkey and to Afghanistan. Um, because of the failures of the other approaches with Turkey, uh, I am going to try and use a coup here. It is an authoritarian government, so it is a legal target for a coup action. Um, in Africa, we're absorbing Angola. We will also absorb um, Zambia, Malawi in the next episode and continue to expand all of them. And then at the right time, we will join the Caliphate and the African Union together. And then we have to figure out how on earth to do the Academy win objective, which requires us to get... Um, which requires us to get like 75% of the world's control point value. We have 23%, so we have an awfully long way to go. I hope you are enjoying, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.